All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, everyone, impeachment is over. Trump is still allowed to run, which means, of course, it is time to start wildly speculating about 2024. Given that the media is literally eating itself alive in bids to try and get some ratings during the Biden presidency, rest assured this will dominate more airtime than anything else in the coming four years. And just like clockwork, things are already off to a real start, with Politico yesterday releasing its first poll. Apparently it shocked them. Personally, didn't shock me at all. Trump sits atop the field with 53% of Republican respondents saying they would support him first. After that, Mike Pence at 12, Trump Jr. at 6%, Nikki Haley at 6, even Mitt Romney coming in there. But of course, the overwhelming takeaway is this. Trump is the single most popular figure in the Republican Party by a mile. So much so that even his own son polls at third, despite never having done literally anything. In fact, amusingly enough, the impeachment gamble appears to have actually solidified Trump's standing within the Republican Party. As this morning consult poll distinctly shows, 54% of Republicans supported Trump 2024 in November after he lost the election. And that number dipped by 12 points after January 6, showing a clear abandonment. But right now, right after impeachment, it's right back to where it was. The exact same figure, 54%. So what does that tell us? First and foremost is this. The Republican Party is the party of Trump. It is his to do whatever he wants with. This is good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Because Trump's greatest folly in his four years in office was making literally everything about him and not really about anything else. If you were the biggest China dove who wanted to bomb Iraq, but you stood with him on Stop the Steal, he didn't really care about the former and cared much more about the latter. This is a problem, of course, for two reasons. First and foremost, when the entire brand is about one person, then that person better be pretty popular. And that's an issue, because while Trump is singularly popular amongst Republicans, he is only actually popular about 40% of the country. Those 40% may love him a lot, but after January 6th, a lot of the country hates him too. Nearly 60%, in fact, wanted to see him convicted, which means there was a marginal crossover of the Mitt Romney, Liz Cheney type Republicans, which are about 15 to 20% of the GOP coalition. But second is this, let's say Trump doesn't run. It's not like he's going anywhere. He's already inserted himself by backing Marjorie Taylor Greene in her fight against Kevin McCarthy. And he made sure that his loyalist, Kelly Ward, was reelected Arizona State Party GOP, despite the fact that she presided over the first GOP loss of that state in decades. Today, he's going after Mitch McConnell. He's not going anywhere. He's going to use personal loyalty to him as a barometer for whether he backs you or endorses you. And by proxy, that means the GOP base is likely to go right along with him. Almost as if to prove me correct, a new candidate running for the GOP Senate nomination in Ohio is proving my point exactly. Josh Mandel, he's an old darling of the right who's actually been on the political scene for over a decade. He came to national prominence when he ran and lost by a significant margin against Sherrod Brown in 2012 as a literal Tea Party tax cut Republican. But he's back. This time, for good, after a stunted start in 2018, and he's going for the 2020 nomination to replace Rob Portman in the Ohio U.S. Senate seat. How did he begin his campaign? With policy? Oh, no. This was literally the first interview he gave on local news. Let's take a listen. It's really made my blood boil, and it's motivated me to run for the U.S. Senate. I want to go to Washington to stand up for the Trump America First agenda. We're going to see uh, studies come out that evidence widespread fraud. But I think when we look back on this election, uh, we'll see in large part that it was stolen from President Trump. Tells you everything you need to know about what cynical politicians think is going to be what it takes in order to get the GOP nomination and even Trump's attention. And here's the thing. It's probably the right call. Although, just to give you an idea how generally phony this all is, someone spotted one of Mantel's latest Fox News appearances in which he appears to be affecting some sort of accent in a bid to appear more working class. Going to Washington to advance a Trump America first agenda. <laughs> All right, I'll admit it. I really just want an excuse to play that. But it doesn't <laughs> underscore the problem. You can say the words working class a lot. You can lean into trying to sound like them, and you may get the stamp of approval by Trump. But on a national level, how exactly is this going to work? I'm choosing to highlight this not to make fun of Mandel and say he will lose, but instead to say the opposite. 
I am of the firm belief he will almost certainly win the election if he gets the nomination, given how red of a state that Ohio has become these days. And when that's the barometer, nothing about policy, then winning a national election outside of the confines of deep red states is going to be extremely, extremely tough. And just to put a finer point on this, take Marjorie Taylor Greene. She was billed as America first and the future of the GOP by many people who told me to excuse some of her lunacy because she would be with us on policy. Guess what happened yesterday? She introduced legislation to expand the use of health care savings accounts, which has basically been establishment GOP health care policy for the last two decades. It's basically what George Will has been proposing. <laughs> now, maybe it's good policy, but it's far from what I was promised whenever it came to some real change. And that's exactly the problem in the future. I thought that was kind of hilarious. That's health, really HSAs. interesting. I was like, what am I living in? Heritage 2010? You <laughs> yes, know, you what's are. going on here? Yeah, Heritage but, yeah. plus stop the steal. There you go. So in. is that, that sounds terrible, right? And that's actually even less appealing than Heritage in the beginning. Right. So how does that work? <laughs> Uh, the Mandel clip is very instructive, um, and it goes to what we just talked about with Mitch McConnell. This is the party of Trump. For Josh Mandel to win the GOP primary, that is exactly how. I probably would have done the same thing if I was him, but I have honor dignity, so I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly the point, which is that if you want to win these nominations, that's how you have to begin your campaign. You have to outdo everybody else and get to the right of them on Stop the Steal. And if you don't do that, you're actually going to be extraordinarily vulnerable, both to attack, but second, this is how you get Trump's endorsement. There's a reason he went on Fox and he sounded like that, and I'm sure he's going to start talking about these same things for this exact reason, because this is the only way that you get that endorsement. And guess what? Trump won the state by eight points, you know? Yeah. So that's what you have to do. And it's just amazing watching somebody like Mandel, kind of been on my radar for a long time, and I mean, this guy was a Tea Party Republican. The Tea Party backed him 100% back in 2012. And look back where we are right now. It's all in on Trump. He didn't even say anything whenever it comes to policy. As far as I know, I don't even need to believe anything. Yeah. This is exactly what you need. And it's the right political choice. So this just shows you how, how are you going to win Georgia again? How are you going to win Arizona again? How are you going to win Wisconsin again? Where Pennsylvania, you know, when these things were so marginal, then these things matter and you can't turn off that many people. Yeah. I mean, Mandel, just so people know who aren't familiar with it, he's like mm. a totally standard issue chamber of commerce type Republican. Right. He, I mean, I should say, he probably doesn't really believe in anything other than his own, like, ambition. I know which some is people why... have known for a long time. A lot of people are rolling their eyes around these Yeah, things. right, yeah. which is why yeah. he was happy to ride the Tea Party wave. Yeah. And now that it's Trump, he's happy to, to say whatever magic words he needs to say about Stop the Steal to try to get that right. endorsement. Ron Johnson's another perfect example. I oh, mean, yeah. This guy's libertarian to his core, total chamber of commerce type. And yet all he has to do is, like, pledge his fealty to Trump or, as you said, give him a tongue bath. And he's... It's true. That and he will win the support of Trump and win the support of the base. That's all it has come to be about. And so, look, in certain states, yeah, that, that's fine. That's definitely the key to winning a Republican primary. Zero doubt about that. Um, just look at how popular Marjorie Taylor Greene is and how much money that she's raising, if no you want to know yeah. um, what you need to do to succeed in the Republican Party. But in any state that is even marginal, it's going to be a disaster in a general election. Even Ohio, I think you're right. Like, mm -hmm. I think Mandel, if he gets the nomination, will probably end up winning. Um, but even Ohio starts to be maybe in play if you really fully go down this path with someone who is, you know, wildly uncharismatic and uninteresting as Josh Mandel is just mouthing these insane talking points. Right. Anyone who's persuadable is going to look at that and be like, eh, I, I think I'll see what's going on on the other side. Now, we'll see how Democrats do and what candidate they put up ultimately and whether they try to run on just the GOP's the party of QAnon, mm -hmm. which they've signaled, versus, hey, we delivered vaccines, hey, we delivered checks. Um, but, you know, this direction of the Republican Party could, if the Democratic Party was smart, actually even put a state like Ohio in play. That's how much of a disaster it is. Look, it only takes a few percentage points to stay home, yeah. to Look switch sides, right. 
to stop being partisan Republicans and evaluate their options in order to totally transform the landscape of the country. Yeah, I mean, look at Georgia and Arizona. You need to look no further. We're talking about 40-some thousand votes across three different states. Even Wisconsin only lost it by 20K votes. That's inc incredible. Remember that ABC post, or ABC poll the week before the election that had Trump down by 17 points? <laughs> 17 <laughs> points. So again, it's all of these problems that he faced were fixable, but he decided to take the exact tactic to make sure that he would lose or somebody who was you know pursuing that lose even more votes the next time around which is kind of incredible when you think about it but you see exactly the way he's doing you see what he did with mitch mcconnell turning personal fealty to him and especially on stop the steal the main barometer of who is you know who is in his graces and who is not and that really brings me to the conclusion that anybody who begins to dabble in this stuff they're just not going to be able to win a national election i just i just don't see how it could possibly happen. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Uh, like you said, maybe it'll be dumb enough to put Kamala Harris up in 2024. Then all bets are off. But if it's Biden, I think it's going to be a big problem for them. We shall say. All right. I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.